Welcome back to yet another top 10 strongest of a generation. We've made it all the way to Gen 7. I'm not going to eat up too much time before getting to the list. But of course, the new mechanics and changes altered the balance of the game further after Gen 6. Mega evolutions remained, but the big change many people think of are Z moves. There are also smaller things like the nerf to burn's periodic damage, which changed statuses for certain Pokemon. Of course, just the mere introduction of new Pokemon in abilities also changes the balance too. Even Tyranitar couldn't stay in the top 10 forever. I'm also aware of the fact that like Gen 6, a lot of you probably did at least try a little bit of competitive Gen 7 when it was still the most recent generation. So I don't want to preach to the choir too much. Like the previous lists, this is based on the OU tier of competitive, for the most part. That means all Pokemon banned to the Uber tier list are also banned from this list. So no Blaziken, no Aegislash, no Mewtwo, Kyogre, Mega Gengar, I think you know the drill by now. So let's get right into the honorable mentions before we start the list. Mega Metagross would be an easy one to put in the top 10, but it got banned to Ubers eventually during its OU run. So this honorable mention is all I can do for it. Zygarde, basically the same situation as Mega Metagross. Dugtrio, not a great Pokemon and is grossly matched out by everything in OU. However, Arena Trap was used a lot in the upper tiers anyway, until OU no longer allowed it. So I feel like I have to give it a mention here. Mega Latias. I feel a little dirty leaving this one out of the top 10, but it just barely missed out for my list. It's very valid to put in your top 10, however, and is pretty common to see, being more well known for its utility options this time around than how it was often used in Gen 6. Other honorable mentions include Superior, Halucha, Mega Scizor, Mega Charizard X and Y, Mega Swampert, Mega Mawile, Valcarona, Tangrowth, Mega Alakazam, Gliscor, Clefable, Garchomp, Excadrill, Rotom Wash, Celesteela, and yeah. There's a lot of strong Pokemon, you guys. This was the last generation where all Pokemon were usable, and as a result, the roster of viable OU Pokemon is wildly big. So if I didn't name your favorite or yet another very powerful Pokemon, please understand. Anyway, let's get right to our number 10 slot. Tapu Lele is one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 7, and it had stiff competition making it to this list, but here it is. With its ability, it summons Psychic Terrain immediately, and its Psychic attacks do insane damage. That alone with a pretty solid dual typing kind of explains itself, doesn't it? And on top of that, Choice Specs is a pretty common choice of strategy for it, so the amount of damage you'll be dealing with is pretty brutal. There are other sets you'll see like one where it'll hold on to a fighting Z-move to improve on some of its key matchups, and another with Choice Scarf, since its 95 speed isn't the best. Though, it's definitely not bad either, considering how much of its base stat total went into its special attack and defense. It's still not unstoppable at all, however, as faster, hard-hitting Pokemon can be an issue. As Tapu Lele isn't the sturdiest Pokemon, and it may need to rely on allies to deal with its counters more than you would expect allies like Magnezone, or other Pokemon coming up on this list. Did you guys know Ferrothorn is good? I mean, I don't think anyone has ever talked about it being good before. Ever. Especially how it's a good hazard setter, has a good typing, as long as it's not taking fire and stuff. Yeah. I'm sure you've never heard of this incredibly niche Pokemon in competitive before. You know how it's got like the perfect combo of options like Spikes, Stealth Rock, Leech Seed, Excellent Defenses, kind of bullies Mega Swampert? Yep. Oh, and that incredible Iron Barbs ability? Yep. This is the first time anyone has ever talked about it. But no, seriously, there was almost nothing different about what makes Ferrothorn great in this meta. It's been consistent in its role since Black and White. If you don't have a reliable fire type to fight it, or fire coverage, you're gonna probably have some serious problems. Not much else to say here. At number 8, we've got Tapu Koko. As an electric fairy type, it's not surprising that its speed is at an insane 130, which has made it slightly more reliable than Tapu Lele in certain matchup situations. 
That being said, it is not outright better in every way, and it'll depend on your team composition. One problem is that its physical attack is 115, but its special attack is lower at 95, which doesn't feel right, especially when you're trying to fill out coverage moves. Sure, you've got terrain and stab anyway, and choice specs is once again a common option, but it does feel like that immense offense should be even more impressive. That being said, it's still an excellent Pokemon with a great type combo. And of course, you could just run it with an electric Z-move. Though, these Z-move options aren't always the most common and successful options long term for the top of the top OU Pokemon. It can be good pivot with Volt Switch, but you might want to run U-Turn instead, thanks to certain ground type Pokemon being very common. Hey, it's Heatran. Again, this is another one of those Ferrothorn situations where this Pokemon has just been able to stay so good for so long for mostly the same reasons. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like Ferrothorn, even its move options haven't changed much. It still has Stealth Rock options, it still has Lava Plume as an option too. You'd be fooled pretty easily, thinking that Gen 7 just didn't change the game at all when you look at certain things. I'm not sure which is more common between Lava Plume and Magma Storm, though Magma Storm is definitely worth it when you get it working. It's just not always reliable. What has changed more noticeably is the introduction of newer counters, like Mega Swampert, who can usually switch in fairly comfortably against Heatran. The other thing is that an alternate option is to make it hold a covered Z Crystal, but it does become very predictable if they get the chance to notice that Heatran isn't holding leftovers its most common and reliable item. And that's the item I'd prefer to have on it, as the old similar general approach to Heatran is the one I personally have always liked. Still the only pure flying type in the game at the time of Sun and Moon's release, Tornadus T is an interesting case in Gen 7. It was already good in previous generations, and it was still good in Sun and Moon, but in Ultra Sun and Moon, it was able to learn Defog, which made it fit better in the meta overall, and is actually the main reason it's more than just an honorable mention this time, as it's an incredible move for it to have, and it's very reliable when it comes to cleaning up the arena. Regenerator is also a great ability, and it can get a lot out of Rocky Helmet. Hurricane is often the stab move of choice since Tornadus T has a higher special attack stat, but the low accuracy doesn't always feel great. U-Turn also makes it a solid pivot, and makes its ability feel even better than it already is. My main complaint, I suppose, would be that unless you focus your EVs into HP, it feels a little fragile with that base HP, and even then, I would have preferred if it were bulkier, as it'd get even more out of Regenerator. And it also relies a lot on the fact that it's so fast. So if it gets paralyzed or has to deal with something faster, it can be a serious problem as electric Pokemon generally don't fear Tornadus, and Pokemon like Tapu Koko aren't exactly uncommon to see. A grass steel type that is the opposite of Ferrothorn in many ways, Kartana is an offensive powerhouse. 109 speed and 181 physical attack is the stuff most Pokemon dream of having. And to pair it up with Leaf Blade for stab, it just tears through almost everything. Setting up with Swords Dance successfully and being able to go to town with either Leaf Blade or coverage of some kind is even more satisfying than usual with how high Kartana's offensive numbers get, assuming you're not using Choice Scarf or Band, which are also very viable choices to hold onto. So why isn't it number one? Bulk. It's terrible, terrible bulk. Its defenses are low, its HP is low, so if you're faster or can counter in some way, it struggles to deal with it. Any surprise hidden power fire coverage choice just feels horrible to get hit by if you're using Kartana. Other very defensive Pokemon can take some hits from Kartana and push back as well, depending on their typing, like Tangrowth. But other than that, Kartana is one of the most fun, ruthless Pokemon to bring out to torture your opponents. It's sometimes surprising that Ash Greninja wasn't banned from OU just based on its stats alone when it achieves that form, especially after being banned in Gen 6 without Battle Bond even being a thing yet. But hey, it's not even number one on my list now, so I guess the joke's on me. But seriously, Greninja in general has always been very solid, 
Its speed is very high, and both its special and physical attack options are excellent. Its typing is good offensively too, but it does suffer a bit defensively with some common weaknesses. And with mediocre bulk, that's probably its only major weakness. With how strong Ash Greninja makes this Pokemon, especially with the buff to Water Shuriken when he gets that form, it's important to note that it's not the only option. You could go with the Protein ability, which gives it stab on every move it'll use, making it feel offensively versatile. Don't sleep on this ability if you're not having luck getting Battle Bond to work out. But overall, I do think Battle Bond to achieve Ash Greninja has the most potential overall. And I think people just find the ability just plain old fun. And when something that's competitively optimal feels fun, then everyone is probably going to do it. That being said, it's actually another Pokemon that can be stopped by Tapu Koko's excellent speed and electric typing, as well as anything that can deal with its offense. Though, the list of Pokemon that can actually take hits from it is very short. So Greninja certainly makes its presence known. These next three Pokemon are honestly all very valid choices for number one, so do keep that in mind as I go through these. Because at number three, we have Toxapex. It has remained one of the greatest defensive mons in the history of the game. Its moveset of Scald, Haze, Recover, and Toxic Spikes is iconic and it's bread and butter. Though Baneful Bunker and Toxic are also commonly listed, and are common alternatives for its fourth move slot. Its 152 physical defense and 142 special defense has always made its role pretty clear from the moment it was introduced to the game. And yeah, this is the opposite of Greninja. People like Greninja because it's good. And people hate Toxapex because it's also good. Now, water poison defensive Pokemon were not new at this point in the game. It's just that Toxapex took it to a totally new level with its stats and movesets. And on top of that, it has Regenerator. And as you can guess, competitive players will put its EVs into HP and Special Defense, so it's going to get the most out of it. And Black Sludge also just continues to add to its longevity. You will be whittled down if you can't deal with it as fast as possible or have some other plan. Its typing, while good defensively, still has common weaknesses like Ground and Electric. But switching into it still sucks. Most of these Pokemon that will try to fight back don't want to get burned by Scald, but they often have no choice but to try to kill it. But if they can't, it just gets switched out, recovers with Regenerator, and then you just get taken out of the game. It's awful to deal with. It's easy to see why you might put it at number one, even if it's not totally unstoppable. At number two, we have Magearna. And I'm sure you're thinking, it's about damn time, as this is another iconic Pokemon introduced in Gen 7. Its Fairy Still Typing resists 9 typings and grants its immunity to another 2. That's insane. It has an excellent move pool that gives it a ton of options, it also boasts excellent defensive stats to go along with the resistances mentioned earlier, and that 130 special attack. Obviously, this is another one that could be listed at number one with no controversy. These top three are basically almost like a three-way and a tie. Anyway, having the move shift gear is massive, increasing your speed by two and your attack by one. Well, there's a reason so few Pokemon have a move like this, though you're primarily using this just for the speed on Magearna. It's pretty common to see this Pokemon also just loaded up with coverage moves rather than focusing on stab but you don't need to go that route. It just has a very solid track record in the metagame for Sun and Moon, and later generations use stab attacks more often. Though it's long since been banned to Ubers in those games. Magearna is just one of those things that can be played in more ways than most, as far as move selection goes. The same also applies for items. Wanna use a Z-move? Well, sites like Smogon will list an electric one, but you really do have a bunch of viable options with that. Leftovers, an Assault Vest set, want to use Pain Split and Calm Mind? Also, there's the Soul Heart signature ability, which only boosts its offense further throughout the match. It's a rough Pokemon to try to deal with in the late game, on top of its already very obvious and mostly straightforward strengths. That being said, the Steel Fairy typing, as excellent as it is defensively, is still weak to ground and fire, and people will have those attack types ready. 
Mega Charizard X and Y can also be tricky if you don't have the coverage for it as they naturally outspeed Magearna, though it's often that it will have a coverage move to potentially deal with it otherwise. Overall, it's another Pokemon introduced in Gen 7 that's incredibly dominant, and some may even say it could be labeled the best in the game. I was going to open this entry up with some joke about a random Pokemon being number one, something I've of course done before, but man, could it be any more obvious that the number one spot is going to be Lando T? It's not only just as good as the previous entries, but it manages to be at that level while being used constantly. Usage rate is not everything. It doesn't fully define if a Pokemon is good, because the statistic alone doesn't tell you how much those players are actually winning with those Pokemon being a part of their synergy. But yeah. Landorus T still wins a bunch of games in Gen 7, despite so many teams having strategies to attempt to wipe it out. It's top tier, and admittedly, a safe pick for the top spot for this list, but I do think it is the right decision for this list. Many of its excellent movesets use a lot of the same philosophy as in Gen 6, so I won't repeat myself and many others who have spoken highly of Landorus too much. I will, however, reaffirm just how good its ground flying type combo is. Earthquake as stab is never something to complain about, especially with that 145 base attack power. Yes, it gets slammed hard by ice. Yes, it's not the fastest or the bulkiest, but once again, it has just the right stab move, stealth rock, U-turn and explosion set option, choice sets, Z move sets, yeah, if Gen 6 for Landorus was like the first Michael Jordan 3 Pete, then Gen 6 was likely the second half. The results are there for it, and it fits on nearly every team. And like Swampert in Gen 3, it forces Pokemon to often keep a coverage move specifically to try to counter it in a similar way, just with ice instead of grass. Essentially compromising what could be a better move set otherwise just because of one Pokemon's existence. I feel like in some ways, it's actually kind of better in the Gen 7 meta than the Gen 6 meta, because in modern Gen 6, it's not quite what it was in its heyday. But in modern Gen 7, it's still among the top three with our previous two entries. It's never stopped seeing that same level of success. And you know what I just love to say. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. And those are the top 10 strongest Pokemon in Gen 7. It wasn't too hard to decide on the initial Pokemon for this, but I have to admit, getting the order down felt a little tricky for me. But what do you think? Did you agree with this list? What Pokemon did you like to use in Sun and Moon? How do you feel about Z-moves as a mechanic? What does your list look like? Let me know in the comment section below.